Welcome to Red House Interior Design uh, Lighting Setup Tutorial. Today we are working with this uh, interior, this modern interior design. So let's go ahead and uh, start adding some uh, lights to our scene. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, turn on emissiveness on some of these uh, materials that behave like a light source. So we have uh, one in here. We have one light uh, in here above the kitchen counter. Once again, bring up the emissiveness. We have uh, light, light bulbs on uh, these pendant lights. Bring it up. And we have uh, some spotlights on the ceiling. So I'm going to turn on the emissiveness on these materials as well. Confirm. And go back to photo mode. And you can see straight away uh, actually when I select this uh, preset scene I already did beforehand. You can see I have all the effects in here. I'm gonna go through all of them uh, after we set all the lights up. You can see these uh, materials are already uh, emitting light so they behave uh, like a light source. So let's go ahead and start adding our first layer of uh, lights back to uh, objects mode and turning on the first uh, layer of lights as you can see it's these spotlights uh, on the ceiling so I select uh, one of them I'm using a medium to wide uh, angle of these uh, spotlights here is the shape here is the value I already test ran a couple of times so I know the value uh, is 29 that I need for today and the cone angle is uh, somewhere around the value in here uh, as you can see, uh, all these spotlights are the same. They have the same value, the same temperature. I want the daylight or cold uh, light, uh, daylight temperature <coughs> of these spotlights. Uh, now these uh, spotlights uh, on this side, on the right hand side of, uh, of the ceiling are angled towards uh, the wall in here. So I'm eliminating the, the harsh shadow that is created by these uh, spotlights, so I angle them uh, slightly towards uh, the wall and these are angled just uh, straight uh, down. So when I go back to a photo mode and I press F8 key on my keyboard, you can see uh, straight away you can preview these lights with the shadows as well. There is uh, shadows in here all around these objects that are being cast uh, from these uh, spotlights. So I'm going back to uh, uh, build mode, turning on another a layer of lights. It is uh, these spotlights from the pendant lights about the dining table in here, as you can see. Uh, once again, these are uh, spotlights. Here is the shape, it's uh, slightly different. Uh, from the previous light, uh, the brightness is a little higher because the the light source is a little smaller and I want uh, the light from, from these pendants uh, to be visible a little, uh, a little more than uh, those spotlights from the ceiling, so the value is a little higher. Once again, uh, all these lights will be uh, cold lights or a daylight temperature. So when we go back to uh, our photo mode to preview these lights, Select the view and I press F8 on my keyboard. Once again, you can see these uh, strong shadows under the, the table from the table and the chairs being cast from these uh, pendant lights. So once again, back to build mode, turning on another layer of uh, lights we have uh, here. It is these, um, these lights in here about the, the kitchen counter. As you can see, it is a, it is a long uh, light, but I'm not using a line light in Lumion because that one does not cast shadows. So I'm mimicking the light by using three spotlights. You can use more if you want, but I think three, four for this uh, light is uh, enough. So I'm using the same type of uh, spotlights with the same value, same temperature, same brightness, uh, cone angle and everything just to be able to mimic the, the line light. But the advantage is, or will be, that these lights will cast shadows. If I used a line light in Lumion, 
it would not cast shadows and it would not look realistic. So when I go back to photo mode and once again press F8 key on my keyboard, you can see the difference. Now I have shadows from the counter coming from these spotlights. If I used a line light in Lumion, there would be no shadows in here and that would not look realistic at all. So that was uh, the spotlights on the counter. Go to, uh, back to build mode. And here is the last layer of lights we have in here. And that is uh, this pendant light uh, about this coffee table. It is a medium to wide angle uh, spotlight. As you can see uh, the bell is a little higher. So we have a little stronger light coming from this one because it's quite close to uh, the table. So it is nice and visible. There is the cone angle value and uh, it is a, once again a daylight or cold light on this pendant and I have a couple of uh, lights in here. There is one uh, spotlight in here for the exterior and there is another spotlight uh, on this pendant above this uh, outside uh, table just to mimic the, the light on the porch in the background. So when we go back to photo mode, select our scene, pressing F8 once again, uh, you can see just a slight uh, uh, slight light or values uh, from those outside lights and here is the, uh, the light source from this uh, pendant light casting shadows on this uh, little puff in here and uh, well we cannot see the shadows from the table but there is a shadow from the from the lamp I mean um, planter and the table the edges as well so um, I'm gonna go through the effects real quick so we know how I set up uh, this uh, scene. I'm using the lens flare effect in here for these, uh, all these lights that I have, the light sources. So they create a little bit of a, a halo around the light source. Uh, working with the master brightness and isolate uh, bright pixels. So you, you find uh, the right value in between those two um, parameters. Next up, Analog uh, Color Lab. I'm using the third style from uh, the preset of uh, this effect, as you can see. It is this one. It's creating a very, uh, very cold uh, mood, uh, kind of contrasty uh, for this interior. Uh, here is the uh, amount. You can choose uh, the amount of the effect that uh, you'll use or overlay above your, um, above your image gonna stay somewhere on the value in here. Next up, reels guys, that is just to uh, show the background uh, uh, through the window in here. I'm uh, using a, a little bit more contrast, so uh, I'm bringing down the brightness uh, quite a lot, as you can see in here, so I get the contrast and, and a darker sky. Exposure, here is the value, it's just slightly above, uh, above midpoint. I want some uh, uh, contrast and uh, nice uh, strong shadows in here, so I'm not uh, using uh, or bringing the exposure up too much. Color correction in here, you can see the temperature is going uh, down a little bit to create a little colder effect once again towards the blue spectrum, the same with the tint. I'm um, bringing up the brightness and as well uh, the contrast up. So we get some, uh, some light on the interior, or enough light, and a little more contrast from those uh, spotlights. Next up, uh, reflection. Now we have uh, a lot of reflective surfaces in here. Uh, there you go, there is uh, six uh, different planes in here. So uh, I'm selecting the floors, obviously, because it's very glossy. Uh, all the glass surfaces, uh, the windows in here. Uh, we have a glass table in here. We have this fireplace that is, um, that is a glass surrounded, so I need to use both the sides. I'm using also this uh, surface because it's quite glossy, and that is uh, all the reflections we need uh, for this one. Next up, uh, hyperlight. Well, as you can see, I'm bringing the amount quite a lot up since we are working with the interiors and we want. Uh, to have details in, uh, in these areas uh, in the corners as well. 
So we need to uh, balance the light in there. Next up, a skylight. Now I'm bringing the brightness down. So I don't get too much light coming from the exterior or outside, inside to um, interfere with, uh, with my lights. So I'm bringing the brightness uh, down. Shadows, that is quite important. I'm bringing the coloring all the way up. That means the shadows will be cold as is uh, our, our light or as are our lights. Uh, the brightness goes all the way down. So I get nice contrast from the spotlights in my interior and the interior exterior I'm bringing to the exterior because I do not want the interior to look, um, to look too warm. So I want the cold look. That's why it is, uh, even though we are working with the interior, I'm using the exterior slider, slider all the way up. Omni shadows, there is the value that I'm choosing. So we get a little bit of details in the corners, but uh, not, uh, not too much or not too sharp. And I'm turning off the soft shadows, as you can see in here, because from those spotlights, you always get uh, very, very strong shadows. So I'm even using the shadow type on a sharp, as you can see in here. So it looks uh, more realistic, the light from the spotlights. Now chromatic aberrations, I just brought the dispersion down a little bit you know, to get uh, too uh, fuzzy on uh, in the corners. And the depth of field, as you can see, only this uh, edge of the sofa, the very near uh, to, uh, towards the lens is uh, out of focus and the rest of the room I want uh, to be sharp obviously so we see all uh, the interior nice and clear so I just chose the, uh, the distance uh, on this table so from uh, then on uh, everything will be sharp that's why the focusing distance is uh, only 2.4 amount uh, somewhere around here and the foreground background slider is almost all the way towards the foreground. So the foreground will be out of focus. Anything from this point uh, onwards will be nice and sharp. So there we are with all the effects and the lights uh, all set. So uh, let's go ahead and proceed uh, towards our final render. You can find exterior lighting setup for this house on a new Millennium Design channel and for a landscape uh, lighting tutorial video on SRP landscape design. Both of the links are in the description. And in the meantime, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.